Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to my Friday message. My special guest this week is Kaf Zarasa. Dr. Zarasa is the recently announced A. Eugene and Marie Washington Presidential Distinguished Professor. He will talk to us about the research into the underpinnings of mental illnesses, such as depression and schizophrenia, as well as his work to expand diversity in biomedical science. But before we talk to Dr. Zarasa, I'd like to share a few updates. In response to sustained decrease in COVID-19 hospitalizations and deaths, Duke Health has relaxed masking requirements in a near pre-pandemic state. Masking is now optional for patients, visitors, and team members in most circumstances, with certain exceptions. Patients and visitors should still mask if they have respiratory symptoms, and team members should mask when providing direct patient care for patients with respiratory symptoms pending diagnostic evaluation. Employees experiencing symptoms of COVID-19 should still report their symptoms to employee occupational health and wellness, schedule testing, and self-isolate until cleared. Other exceptions and protocols can be found at the website on your screen. In exciting research news, a new study indicates that an innovative method of heart transplantation pioneered at Duke has the potential to expand the pool of available hearts by as much as 30%. The procedure, known as Donation After Circulatory Death, or DCD, uses recent technology to sustain the viability of donated hearts even after cardiac death. Previously, these hearts were not candidates for transplant. Duke teams performed the first adult and pediatric DCD transplants in the United States. The new study found that transplanted DCD hearts are equivalent to hearts managed under customary standards of care. The development could make a heart transplant an option for many more patients. Monday, June 19th is Juneteenth holiday and I encourage all of us to reflect on our own roles and responsibilities in the ongoing effort to ensure that the School of Medicine is and remains a place of equity, diversity, inclusion, and belonging for all. Additionally, I'd like to invite all of you to my State of the School address at 4 p.m. this coming Wednesday, June 21st. We would love to see you in person in the Great Hall of the Trent Siemens Center. The event will also be live streamed and recorded for additional viewing options. In honor of Eugene Washington's impact as Chancellor for Health Affairs, Duke's first Presidential Distinguished Chair has been named for Chancellor Washington and his wife Marie. Presidential Distinguished Chairs are a new class of endowed professorships intended to maximize Duke's ability to recruit and retain exceptional faculty. On Wednesday, the inaugural A. Eugene and Marie Washington Presidential Distinguished Chair was awarded to my guest today, Dr. Kaf Zarasa. And now, please sit on my conversation with Kaf. Kaf, thanks so much for joining me today. And first, I want to congratulate you as the inaugural Presidential Distinguished Chair. So congratulations. Thank you so much. Tremendous honor. So I want to talk a little bit about your work, particularly mm -hmm. the intersection between psychiatry and biomedical engineering. Mm -hmm. How did you come to that combination? Yeah, well, I was an engineer in the undergrad, and I learned about all of the wonderful work being done here around brain-machine interface, uh, robotic arms moving when, people, when uh, preclinical animals at the time were thinking about it. And I thought that's exactly what I want to do with my life, take my engineering skills and figure out how to help people who were suffering from disabilities. And so I started reading everything on medical coursework. I applied for MD-PhD programs, got in, um, came to Duke, and then realized that you did residency afterwards. So that's how little preparation I'd been doing to, to pursue this path of integrating engineering with medicine. And ultimately, when I got here, I just became so fascinated with physiology, particularly around cardiology. And so all the presentations in class were heart physiology and electricity moving around. And over time, I really started thinking about how similar the heart was to the brain. Yet in the clinical setting, in the heart, we had EKGs, we had calcium channel blockers. And in the brain, we really weren't sure what the physiology was right. that was leading to differences in mental illness. So the question for me was, how do you take these engineering skills, understanding processing of electricity and signal processing, and use it to come up with for cures for devastating psychiatric illnesses? So to do something transdisciplinary like that, you've got to build a team. Mm -hmm. How did you do that at Duke? Yeah, well, that's taken a really long time. Um, I've been trained in several areas, so engineer by background. I did my PhD in neurobiology here, and then ultimately got clinical training in psychiatry. And so I've always realized when you think about an organ like the brain, it is biology, but it's also genetics. It's chemistry. 
it's physics, and it's actually electrical engineering as well. And so these illnesses that we see, whether it's depression or bipolar disorder or Alzheimer's, they're so complicated that any illness or any change in any of those disciplines could lead to the problem, right? So it could be a problem of brain chemistry or physics, or it could be literally the chemistry of receptors or molecules. And so it occurred to me that I would have to gather all of those perspectives to figure out what was going on right. in each individual brain in front of me. So it's kind of the theme that I like to push, which is the one Duke theme, is, is building across all the expertise at Duke. Yeah. Who are some of your other collaborators? Yeah, so one of my close collaborators is David Carlson. Mm -hmm. I actually met him. He was a graduate student in electrical engineering here, and I joined his thesis committee. He was in the laboratory of Larry Karen, who ultimately became ah. vice provost of research yeah. here. And uh, it was recording all of these electrical signals from the brain, massive data sets, and we realized we couldn't make sense of it. And as we looked across, we realized that people in electrical engineering and geothermal imaging had solved these problems in understanding weather patterns. So we wondered if you could take some of those same models that were being used for weather patterns and apply them to electricity in the brain, and it turned out it worked. So David uh, spent a little bit of time at Columbia doing a postdoc and then came back here for a little bit more postdocing, joined the faculty, and then David and I started writing grants together. David had his first R1 at 31 years old, <laughs> wow. looking at the data underlying some of what we were collecting in the lab. So he's been fantastic. And we basically built the lab together, training students together, um, postdocs, and doing some fantastic work. Well, you've got a great team. Yeah. You're obviously passionate mm -hmm. about what you study. What's behind that passion? Yeah. When I was in medical school, I, as I mentioned, this started off as a curiosity for me, thinking about brain-controlled devices like robotic arms and robotic legs. And my first rotation was at the State Psychiatric Hospital. It was John Umstead Hospital mm -hmm. at the time. And I just remember taking care of a patient, um, one with schizophrenia, one with bipolar disorder, and going back and telling the attending, I'm not sure why this guy's in the hospital, right? He's just like talking a little fast. <laughs> and, you know, he wanted to do all these altruistic things. And he's like, just like my family members growing up. And my attending was like, he has bipolar disorder and he's fluidly manic. And it was the first time wow. I realized that I had mental illness in my family. I obviously went home and called my mom, and we'd never had conversations about how deeply impacted my family was from bipolar disorder, schizophrenia, and depression. Um, and at that point in time, it became clear that those individuals who are thinking about taking these engineering devices to solve movement, I could adapt those engineering devices and, and understand how the brain created mood and thoughts and feelings, and ultimately come up with a new type of treatment for mental disorders. Well, the promise and the challenges are extraordinary. Mm -hmm. But you have several passions, mm -hmm. and I know something that is particularly important to you is enhancing diversity in STEM. Where did that come from? Yeah, well, you know, if you think about mental illness, right, they deeply impact who we are as human beings. And they impact um, not just individuals from one background or one group, um, they impact everybody. And so even if you look across our country now, in terms of young people, like 60% of young teenage girls are experiencing persistent feelings of sadness or anxiety. So these are massive problems. And they're not a challenge that like a small group of people are gonna solve. You need to bring together everybody. So I've always realized that if you're gonna tackle big challenges, you need to, I'm an athlete by background, so you need to get the best talent <laughs> on the field. Absolutely. And I think having been at Duke for 20 years, you realize Coach K's success is recruiting. <laughs> and so I work really hard to bring in the best talent of all backgrounds and experiences because the problems are big, they're massive, and they impact all of us. Additionally, as we create tools and therapeutics, we wanna make sure that they apply to everybody, right? And so having those perspectives early on is a big part of shaping the techniques and technologies that is developed in the therapeutics down the line. Well, diversity is how we really become excellent, yes. and I completely agree with you there. So thank you for all that you do, and congratulations on your recent successes. Thank you so much. And thanks to everybody for all that you do, and have a great week.